Welcome back watch people. So again, my services were required by the mainstream media this week. This time it was a turn of Sky News who asked if I could travel into central London to take part in an interview to discuss London's watch crime problems after the Met's much appreciated but some might say long overdue announcement that they are at last starting to go undercover in an attempt to slow down the rate of watch robberies in our capital city and catch some of these highly active criminal gangs. Now, you guys know me, under normal circumstances, I would have been chomping at the bit, jumping on a train, raring to go, anything to help fight the calls, right? But this time, I actually initially at least told them no. Why? Well, because if I'm honest with you, I've had enough of trying to fight this cause only for the mainstream media to keep missing the bloody point. Either that or they just don't want to know in the first place. You guys can decide for yourselves. So after turning down the very kind offer of an unpaid trip into Sadiq Khan's hellhole, they offered to send a camera crew down to Brighton, to which I agreed, particularly as they did seem keen this time to talk about the real issues behind watch crime and not just to roll out the usual lines of, oh, did you know that Amir Khan and Ali Jones have both been robbed for their watches, etc., etc.? Yes, we all know. So look, hope springs eternal. And once again, I'm thinking, well, look, you know, Paul, maybe this is the time you get to tackle some real problems and you start to talk about the real issues and get to the bottom of all this nonsense, the real reasons why this is happening in the first place. 45 long minutes I spent talking with a lovely presenter from Sky TV who seemed genuinely interested, shocked and indeed surprised at my stories. But as always, the butchers in the cane or censorship room you decide as usual, rendered most of my words and efforts pretty much worthless once again. What did make it to air was sadly rather predictable and didn't come as a surprise to me as Kay Burley did the usual. Ali Jones walking in the air. He, um, he had a £17,000 Rolex on his wrist out with his family Sunday afternoon and um, they snatched his watch from his wrist. And then, of course, we got that ever so proper public school panel trying to look frightfully shocked that some people might even get their feelings hurt and telling us how remarkably brave these police officers are, which, of course, is absolutely true. It's pretty brave standing around waiting to be attacked. Yeah. But come on, why are the real issues surrounding watch crime always ignored? Not just the theft, it's the fear. So just in case there are any proper professional journalists out there from the mainstream media that are wanting a real watch crime story and who have the balls to tell it for what it is, here's what I told Sky that they chose not to mention because the following uncomfortable truths are the biggest contributing factors. Look, firstly, I'm afraid to tell you that we have general apathy and low morale among the police. Uh, they're only really interested in high profile names because it's all about perception with the Met. Criminal gangs, mostly from overseas, not exclusively, but mostly from overseas, come into the UK for the sole purposes of one thing, and that is committing crime. And they, of course, and this is where it starts to get really interesting, are assisted by the wonderful watch manufacturers themselves, who decided many years ago in their wisdom that taking away the ability for anyone to be able to tell if a watch was stolen in the first place was somehow a good idea. And then I spoke about our pathetic and weak criminal justice system that allows street robbers and street rats out on bail only to disappear from where they came from, rendering entire police operations a complete waste of time and indeed taxpayers' money. Is it any wonder that the police can't be bothered half the time? Oh yes, it's not all their fault. And then I spoke about our horribly politically correct judges who seem to dish out weak or suspended sentence after suspended sentence to these absolute scumbags that violently rob and traumatise their decent, innocent victims. We also spoke about how organised gangs and watch theft funds the drug trade and yes, even terrorism. But of course, it all fell on deaf ears. It went in one ear and out the other. And so it will continue until, until someone in the mainstream media is big enough, is man enough, is interesting enough 
and more importantly, is caring enough to tackle the real story that is still yet to be told properly.